Here is how you get the awesome and secret Assassin's Blade melee weapon and ornate blade in Remnant 2. These are located in the Lossom world and what you're going to want to do is re-roll Lossom in adventure mode until you get the palace starting area. Within this area we want to get the council event. This usually requires you to find a jester that you go up to and interact with, he'll do a little dance and song and then give you a magic quill. This lets you open the portal door nearby him. This door has a chance to go into the council event area. You will know that you have it for yourself when the location is called the council chambers. If you don't get this from the jester, then simply re-roll and try again until you do. When you're within the council chambers, you then want to go up to them and talk with them. They will then require your assistance in an investigation against who killed the king. The way that you do this is by exploring the council chambers area until you find a mirror that will take you to a mirrored world of this location. Within the parallel version of this area, you want to make your way back to the council room with the seats, defeat all of the enemies inside, and pick up the keys at the bottom of the pillars that they're sitting on, and then slot these keys back in to reflect the order at which they sit in the real world. To help you out here, the teal color goes on the left, red goes in the middle, and purple goes on the right. Once you've slotted in these keys correctly, the door above them and behind their seats will open up. This will take you through to the throne where you will see the dead king sitting. From here you want to parkour your way up the ledges to climb onto the platform behind the king. Here you will find a dagger that's lodged into his spine. You will want to take this out and from here you have one of two choices. You can either go on to get the ornate blade or the assassin's blade and if you want to get the other one you will have to do this event all over again with an alternative ending. So if you want to get both you will have to re-roll and do this again up until this point. For the assassin's blade you will need to find Nimue. For us we found her in the middle area of the lift shaft in the light version of the world. And remember that you can switch between both the light and dark version of this area by pulling the lever on the circle platform that turns around and then will change between night and day. But again, we found her in the light version of this area. You simply talk with her and have her craft the Assassin's Blade for you. However, if you want to get the Ornate Blade instead, then you will need to go back to the council chambers where they are sitting and accuse the correct member that you can identify by inspecting the blade that was lodged into the back of the king and the colored crest on the blade will match who you should accuse. These weapons are essentially perfect for both the Challenger and Invader class that focus on dealing melee damage. The Assassin's Blade is probably Probably the cooler one of the two. So we're going to start off with the Ornate Blade first. The Ornate Blade doesn't have a weapon mod which is a bit disappointing. And of course with melee weapons like swords you can't slot one in. It does look pretty cool though and it has a trail effect every time you do a slash. If you upgrade it to its maximum it's listed as doing 156 damage at level 20. The description says the Forsaken Prince's past has only hardened his personality like tempered steel. His father imperious and immortal, his mother strong yet bitter. It's a miracle he survived to adulthood at all, and that he has not slaughtered more along the way. It's an intricately forged elongated sword designed to keep stronger enemies at bay while remaining light enough for agile maneuvers. Personally, for us, we did this mission for the Assassin's Blade because not only does it look really cool, but it also has a very good mod power on it. The description says, despite what people say, laws are not made to be broken. They can, however, be interpreted, elided, and willfully misunderstood. Any law can be circumvented in the right circumstances, even the laws of the one true king. Well, the weapon mod for this one is pretty cool. It increases your damage by a whopping 25% against bleeding enemies, and then another 25% when attacking from behind. The thing is, your charged attacks on this weapon also apply 200 bleeding over 10 seconds. So it not only has increased damage against bleeding targets but also gives you a way to make them bleed. If you upgrade this to maximum it's listed as having 82 damage at level 20. This weapon in particular pairs very well with the invader class as it has the ability to instantly teleport behind enemies giving you that bonus attack damage when hitting from behind. One thing to take note of is that this weapon does have a negative crit chance but if you buy the abrasive whetstone in ward 13 this will give you the bonus of when attacking a bleeding enemy crit chance is increased by 15% and crit damage is increased by 30%, so you can easily mitigate this with just that one item. So do you plan to go for the ornate blade or the assassin's blade? And do you have any good items or rings that synergize well with either of these weapons? We'd love to know what you found down below in the comments so we can all learn together as a community. And the two videos on screen now, we think you'll really enjoy if you did enjoy this one. You don't have to watch them if you don't want to, but if you did like this video, you're probably going to like these ones too. And then tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below.